I want to introduce a man who wears many progressive hats. As a green jobs advocate, an attorney, an author, a civil rights activist, he founded the Rebuild the Dream campaign, and every week he takes that progressive vision into the lion's den of CNN's crossfire, debating with former Freddie Mac <laughs> historian Newt Gingrich. Please welcome Van Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind. <laughs> um, I, I know we're behind, so I want Roger yelling at me. I always just go ahead with my part. Um, first of all, it's just really good to be here, and it's really good to be here for uh, my hero, uh, my friend, uh, somebody who has been there for me personally uh, in good times and bad, uh, Leo Girard. Give him a round of applause just at the mention of his name. Um, You know, the big challenge that we have uh, with all the economic crisis, with the ecological crisis, with the spiritual crisis, with the moral crisis is to, we have to make a decision in the face of crisis. Are we going to turn to each other or on each other? That's it. It's pretty simple. Tea Party says turn on each other. Uh, everybody's on their own. It's all about the you know, individuals. And you have some people. Uh, who have become the global icons of what it means when we turn to each other. And what Leo Girard has been able to do, uh, first of all, inside the labor movement, by helping different labor groups come together, he's built uh, the biggest industrial union uh, that we have on, on this half of the planet. Uh, and he's done it with skill, he's done it with determination and integrity. He's gone beyond the labor movement, and he's reached out to the environmental movement, uh, we've always been pit against each other, environmentalists versus labor. Uh, he's been the most effective labor leader at bringing us together in the Blue-Green Alliance to try to get green jobs and clean energy jobs here in the United States. And he's even gone beyond that. When he realized that the dream of green jobs was being stolen by illegal tactics from our friends in China, and nobody was doing anything about it, we were watching these jobs go away. He led the charge uh, at the federal government level all the way to the WTO and stood up uh, for good labor practices, for fair labor practices, and got China to stop spending millions of dollars stealing jobs here and became a global hero for, for green jobs for everybody, not just for one country. Leo Girard is a hero. He's a hero in the labor movement. He's a hero in the environmental movement. And I am proud to bring him up here to give him his award as a progressive champion. Uh, but first, let's see this video about him. We got a cool video I want you guys to see first. Leo has been out there for a long, long time. Uh, doing something pretty terrific. He is himself a man of boundless energy, impressing for the activism essential for building a more progressive society and a cleaner and more humane world. We represent the voices of ordinary people. I grew up in a, in a union household where my dad uh, made very little money and uh, when uh, he needed uh, drill bits for the mine or he needed what they called oilers, which is the rubber where you, you work underground, they took it off his paycheck. There's polls that are done that if workers were allowed to choose freely to join a union, almost 60% of them would today join a union. The reason the opposition is so great is because it, what we see by the lack of unionization is workers haven't been able to get their share of the wealth that they've been creating in our society. Workers organize workers. Workers get together and they decide they want a union. That's who organizes the union most of the time. The organizer is the facilitator. And our job is to create the environment where they have the facts and they have the knowledge and they make an honest decision that they want a union. And once that's been done, what is, it, what is a greater vote than putting my name on a card? Signing my name and saying, I want this union. Our union held its first conference on what was then called pollution abatement in the middle 60s. Our union led the fight 
to reduce coke oven emissions. Our union led the fight to remove lead from the workplaces and fight for a lead standard in the 60s and 70s. We fought for a benzene standard. We joined the fight for the banning of asbestos and the elimination from our workplaces. We fought to remove acid rain in my hometown, which was the largest single polluter in North America. For all my years growing up, the mining company would say, well, you, you gotta have a choice between these good jobs and a little bit of pollution. The reality is we didn't have to have the choice. We're either gonna have both a clean environment and good jobs, or in the long run, we'll have neither. We are proud to present America's, uh, America's Future Progressive Champion Award to Leo R. Gerard for his extraordinary accomplishments and achievements. Please come up here and get your award, sir. Leo Gerard. Well, I told Van when we wouldn't let go of each other that uh, I should probably say thank you very much. I'm going home now. But uh, I, uh, I couldn't help but think if my uh, mom and dad were here, uh, my mom would have been really proud and my dad might have believed half that stuff. <laughs> but let, let me uh, thank the campaign for the tremendous work that they do and the struggle that they make every day to make sure that the real information and the real facts get out so that activists, those of us who want to fight the good fight for a better future, the campaign provides that information, does that kind of work, and they do that, uh, I think, in a way that is very, very beneficial to what we all try to do as activists, and I think we ought to give the campaign a big hand, Roger and Bob. And I, and I do want to say a couple of words about uh, the myth. And one of the things that happens in our society, as Van said, they try to pit us one against the other over all kinds of various issues. And nothing has been more successful the longest period of time of pitting environmentalists against trade unionists or environmentalists against workers and continue to try to make that false dichotomy that you had to decide that you're either going to have, quote, good jobs or a clean environment. And I learned growing up in my hometown that it's not a choice of either or. It's that you're going to have both or neither. And when we talk about we've created the Blue-Green Alliance, there's a person who I know is not in this room who really deserves a lot of record and a lot of recognition for that. And that's Carl Pope, who was the head of the Sierra Club at the time that we created the Blue-Green Alliance. When we created the Blue-Green Alliance, we had a press announcement at the National Press Club. Um, <laughs> Carl showed up, I showed up, Dave Foster showed up, and about three drunken journalists that didn't know where they were. <laughs> I'm proud to tell you that almost six years later, the Blue-Green Alliance, through our affiliate organizations, now represents almost 15 million people. And, and we have to come to grips with the reality that there's not any one progressive group that on their own could turn back the right-wing tide that has been sweeping the nation and that has really been pushed. And I was thinking about it last night when I was in uh, Tyson's Corner is waiting for the results from that way too close election. I couldn't, I couldn't help but remember seeing Ronald Reagan on television saying government's not the solution, government's the problem. And that might be okay if you're rich. You can send your kids to their private school, you have your private police, you have your private everything. But I'll tell you what, poor people and working people need a government, they need regulations, and they need national health care. And I think about, 
And again, I want to pay tribute to the campaign because I don't think anyone did greater work when Social Security was under attack and Roger and Bob mobilized the troops and mobilized all of us progressives to go fight against so the Social Security destruction. And I say to myself quite often, are we asking for too much? Are we asking that decent wages are too much? Are we asking that after you've worked a lifetime that you're able to retire with some dignity, that you don't have to cut your pills in half, that you retire with some decent health care, that you can have the autumn years of your life where you don't have to worry about being kicked out of your home if you get sick? I don't think we're asking for too much. But I actually believe if we don't come together as progressives and put our egos behind us, put our institutional egos and our personal egos behind us and decide that this fight isn't just for us, this fight of the kind of society we want is for our kids and grandkids. I don't want my legacy that my grandkids have a lesser life than I've had, and I believe those fights are important, and we need to fight together so that our kids have a good life and our grandkids have a better life than we had. That has to be our mission. So I know that Roger runs a pretty tight ship, so I'm going to close by saying this. And I say this to all of us. And, and I, before I do that, I want to thank some of the, uh, the vice president of our union, Tom Conway, uh, convinced some of these major corporations that we have pretty good relationships with, uh, convinced them to uh, make a contribution. I told Tom, tell them to send the money, but they don't have to come. <laughs> but I'm, pretty, I'm really proud that a couple of them, several of them, have shown up. And I'm really proud that one of them from Dom Tower, I said, I'm going to do some lefty shit here. And he said, that's OK, so I got my car still running. <laughs> so, but I want to acknowledge that they're here and they're supporting our causes. So I'll give them a hand. <laughs> the, the last thing I want to say is something that I say to our leadership and to our membership as often as I can. The country doesn't have to be this way. This isn't God-given. This wasn't handed down. This isn't the free hand of the market. Everything is designed to be this way. And we don't have to stop to say that we have to win every fight. The fact of the matter is, none of us could promise that we could win every fight. But I can make you this promise. If we don't fight, we're going to lose. And if we don't fight for the kind of future that we want for our kids, don't fight for the kind of future you want. Fight for the kind of future you want your kids and grandkids to have, and then you can't be wrong. So thank you very much to the campaign. Thank you very much to all of you.